In 2009, a video was brought to my attention. It came out of Iraq and dates back to March 17, 2005, from the Iraq Mujahideen Army, their press division. The video piqued my interest because what the narrator was speaking about and saying, speaking about a new world order, one world government, how American soldiers and the American public had been lied to about the war, how they were currently still being lied to at the time of the creation of the video about the war, and other things. And I've had it for a while, and I've played the audio clip on air multiple times. And it can be found in the Reality of War download section on federaljack.com. Just go to federaljack.com forward slash war. And it'll open up page with all blue links on it. Scroll down to where it says just who were we fighting in Iraq. And you can download the video for yourself or you can just download it from YouTube here. I've been wanting to release it video wise but not sure if YouTube would rip it down and try to close accounts or anything so I'm putting it together in a manner so that way they understand it's not trying to promote anything but trying to put the video up with a little bit of commentary for educational purposes to make people think because that's why I do what I do. So hopefully after doing some creative video editing and some commentary here, YouTube won't pull the video down. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Here's the video dating back to March 17, 2005. I call it, Just Who Were We Fighting in Iraq? People of America, we wish to share with you our thoughts on the events we experienced, as well as what the future may bear. And despite the madness we have endured and still, we see no harm in presenting you with the criminal nature of your newly re-elected emperor. Despite our belief that the elections were flawed, we know now that when there is a close tie between the candidates, there is something wrong. Some in our ranks believe that any candidate from any side of the spectrum are two faces of the same coin. You, the people, have said your word in what is claimed to be a democracy, and thus have chosen a leader who claims to represent your vision. It is your right to lead the world as it is the right of any nation which chooses to do so. Yet this does not allow you to conquer others. There is a belief of a large number of our people that a lot of the facts do not reach you. Facts that may be classified as unsuitable for the general public. Facts that are twisted to gain a positive image here or there. Nothing new to an emperor who represents deception, lies, crimes, half victories and total defeats. Your administration, time after time, lied and presented you with achievements directed by Hollywood and performed in Iraq. You have elected these criminals, and thus you are responsible for their actions. We hope that your future decisions will be based on reason and belief, for your emperor tomorrow will mirror the image of America to the world, and by his actions will your empire be measured. And for the first time in history, a mafia of the weapons plants represented by Bush, oil companies represented by Dick Cheney, and the Zionists, represented by Paul Wilfowitz and Richard Pearl, hijacked the United States of America in an ingenious plan to control the world. This type of administration is exactly what Benjamin Franklin once warned of. By weakness and ignorance, you have allowed this gang of criminals to hijack your country, create a new phobia to recruit those whom they regard as nothing but fuel and vehicles to their master plan. This administration will enforce on you, just as it tries to enforce on our people, new laws that will result in a police state similar to those your consecutive governments back in our region. Legislation will soon be drafted by the appointed puppets to allow foreign ownership of land and structure, and soon our people will be the foreigners on the land of their forefathers. This new world order will enslave people of all religions and race, and soon your children, as well as ours, if they survive, will truly live in a planet of apes. And with a reduced population for ease of control, this can only be the implementation of a plan once presented by Henry Kissinger. This world has not yet seen an empire which constitutes in its prime objectives the destruction and genocide 
of whole populations and societies only to control the energy resources of this planet. Your representatives and their media have portrayed an image that an insurgency is in effect and that it is led by elements of foreign fighters entering from Syria and neighboring countries. Yet we assure you, this is only a continuation of what Bush once claimed, mission accomplished. This resistance movement was prepared for and is only the second chapter of this war and we are mostly, if not all Iraqis, proud Iraqis, who kept their oath to defend people and country. And because this war may last longer than what the invaders anticipated, we have all promised to make their stay long, costly and painful. Blaming other countries is nothing but creating new pretexts to invade other sovereign states and back future expeditions. They have made our country a battlefield to settle accounts with elements of Al-Qaeda, formerly dear allies and partners. They have also created new phobias to justify their continued presence despite their loss of this war. And for the general media, we call on them to think about what they declare and not fear death and imprisonment. Do not fall into the traps prepared by those who pull the strings from Tel Aviv. As for the declared casualties, this is an epic on its own. We assure you that the figures are far higher than they declare. It is not a secret today in Iraq what we call the green card soldiers. Young men from South America and other parts of the world gathered and promised the US citizenship and large sums of cash for their mercenary services in Iraq. They are always on the front lines and their casualty figures are never declared. They are hidden in unmarked graves and dumped into rivers under the cover of moonless nights, some of which the resistance have provided evidence of. There are also a large number of security contractors who are not listed as military personnel. To us, it is one thing to be tricked into this war, but it is totally different to come here and fight someone else's war. After the failed American elections in Iraq, they will now play the sectarian card. They are already sending their mercenaries to destroy churches and mosques alike in order to prepare the ground for civil war. They will train more and more local traitors to conduct police operations and detention raids on anyone who does not accept democracy performed at the muzzle of a barrel. The local mercenaries will also act as sandbags to their masters when we choose to strike. The non-conduct of your troops has also taken its toll on our people. It has created resentment and disgust. They dismiss these war crimes as isolated cases, yet the figures are always on the rise. What's more, our scandals of Abu Ghraib, Boka, and the use of chemical weapons on Fallujah, and only God knows what's to come. Life under dictatorship is far more safer than behind the bars of your democracy. Have you not asked yourselves, where are the weapons of mass destruction, and where are the links between our previous government and the once CIA-sponsored Al-Qaeda? Or is that all now a thing of the past? What happened to the thousands of people who died and continue to die of cancer? Women who give birth to deformed babies caused by the effect of your military's depleted uranium shells. Since 1990, thousands on both sides of the conflict have suffered unknown illnesses. Many have died since then, and others lack medical attention. Large parts of Iraq will be radioactive for millions of years to come. And if we were to return this radiating material to the US and Britain, we would be no different than those who use them. May we ask you, why do you think the British government decided to set foot only in the area? You have left the difficult areas for your boys to suffer. This deal was accepted by your government only to form a purely cosmetic alliance with a nation that still strives for the glory of its imperial past. They have turned the land of the free into a camp of capitalist slavery and then changed the home of the brave into a printing house for papers they call dollars and guarded it with enormous military might. This administration, which claims that you have re-elected, has brought on more humiliation and insults to each and every one of you than any other government in your short yet tremendous history. And as odd as it may seem, we advise you to take matters in your own hands and rid this world of such criminals or any form of government which resembles the neocons in their aims. Form a third party if need be. Appoint those who resist preemptive war as true representatives of the people. 
before it is too late. And if demonstrations and protests are not heard, use and protect what is left of your constitution and correct matters by force. This world awaits your move. Today these words may seem strange, but we believe that a nation which once gave the world John F. Kennedy, Benjamin Franklin, George Washington, Hughes and Henry Ford will not fall short of giving true leaders of substance and dignity. This war has taught us that one man on the field can change the outcome of a day. One man who believes in true freedom can do what nations put together dare think of. We share these thoughts with great honesty to those of you who spent days and nights trying to prevent this war, timeless efforts to prevent this real holocaust. To all of you we say thank you for your time. No more death. No more destruction. No more bloodshed. No more lies. No more injustice. No more terror. No more. No more hate. No more tyrants. No more sending our family overseas to fight in endless wars. No more death of loved ones. We are change. Speak out now. My name is Johnny Black. No more wars. Not in my name. All right, guys. Uh, Linda, I didn't have a chance to, uh, well, I had a chance, I just didn't do it, but uh, to make up a sign. But uh, to our political leaders that want to create all these terrorist organizations and then bankrupt us farther with all these uh, bullshit wars and all of that bullshit, uh, save it. No more in my name. Thanks. AV Science not here. Formerly uh, the wake up time. But no longer needed that channel name because I'm already awake. Uploading this video to say no more war. No more war not in my name no more war this is my entry into no war not in my name part two to the united states government the president of the united states and everybody who thinks they really are in charge let me explain something to you do not put american citizens in harm's way again and overseas no war, not in my name. The threat in Iraq is not a threat to me. The threat in Iraq is only a threat to my children when you start sending them to fight a fucking war for an oil company. So let me tell you, if you per perpetuate this war, not in our names, if you decide to go to war no matter what the American people say, we're gonna go to war with you, the American government. People are fed up. Watch yourselves. We know where you live. For anybody within the military, whether you're in the US, UK, or French armed services, if you're thinking about or being ordered to go back out to Iraq or anywhere in the Middle East, think about what these people are ordering you to do. Say for instance you're going to fight ISIS or any of these terrorist organizations but ISIS for instance who do you think trained these people? 
Who do you think equips these people? And who do you think funds these people along with Saudi Arabia? The very people that are ordering you to, for you to go out to fight against them. They're funding both sides. All you're doing is fighting for the elitists. Those with interests in corporations, banks, any resources can get hold of. No war, not in my name. No war! And not at all in my name. Things are crazy in the world today. There is an agenda. There is a destabilization program that's taking place. The war program, the destabilization happening now in Iraq and the fragmenting of that country into factions and the divisions we're seeing, the political divisions in the United States, it's not acceptable. No war and not in my name. And I ask all of you to stand in this spirit of a greater good for all humanity. To the American government and all legislature, all offices thereof, our tax dollars are being spent in other countries without authorization from we the people. We have take, you have taken benefits away from the American veterans, seniors, disabled, and the homeless while you bring America to her knees and terrorists to their strength. The rebels and terrorists are getting stronger every day with the taxpayer dollars from America. Again, you are taking us to a war without ta with taxpayer dollars against our will, the will of we the people. America has her borders. You've brought immigrants in and aliens into our country without going through due process. Spending taxpayer dollars like it's nothing. Again, this war, at a time when the national deficit here in America is $7.55 trillion, there are 3.4 million Mer American citizens in America. I say spend the money here at home to fix what you have broken and what you've destroyed. I do not authorize another war, not in my name. No war, not in my name. I just want to say, Linda's wrong. I mean, we need war. War in my name, yes please. There's an empire to defend. Somebody has to. I mean, it's heroic. And besides which, medals are, are out there to be won. And plus, we've, we've bought a lot of military equipment, and if we don't use it, it's, I mean, there's no way to justify the expense. I mean, how are we going to issue a budget based on what we spend last year if we don't use it. And besides which, I mean, um, the whole production model is based on uh, the enemy 
destroying our stuff so that we can build more. Right? I mean, we could make these things last thousands of years if we really wanted to. We could go back to galvanizing fucking cars. But then, you know, it disturbs the whole idea of forced consumerism. Uh, we have to go to war. You see? I mean, and, you know, so Linda's wrong. She's just wrong. I mean, there's just no way that we can stop this. I mean, do you know how much of the underground fell off a turnip truck? The, the, the economy is from Afghanistan into here and all the rest of it. You know, I mean, just the money siphoning. I mean, it costs like hundreds of bucks just to be there per square acre. Right? I mean, that's investment. You want to support this. I mean, absolutely, you can go off and, you know, have your dreams of eventual peace, which is coming. I mean, the boys will be home by Christmas. They will. I mean, look, income tax has been so good to us. I mean, we're still paying for World War fucking one, aren't we? I mean, this could go on forever and leverage mortgage debt and long-term assessments. And, we, and plus, the whole Ministry of Statistics relies on this sort of thing. Do you want unemployed statistics, you know, majors wandering the street? Think of the unemployment. And besides which, what are we going to do with all of these people? We've got all these employees in the armed forces, don't we, in the supporting industries? Unemployment! The economy! It's about the economy! You want that to continue, so that the currency can continue flowing in an indebted servitude for all time. I mean, look, 1066, property tax. Do you know how many wars we managed to finance since that just one simple little decision in an administrative budget for your good? We're looking out for your interests. And don't we take care of them when they come back? Of course we do. We love them. You can parades and everything, watch them up and down the street every year. You know? You want that? Now, I mean, not to question Linda herself, but, you know, I heard from some guy just around the corner that said she was likely gay, but votes conservative. Yeah, that's right. I mean, credibility blown right there. There's the argument. I mean, I don't need to say any more, do I? She's out to ruin the economy. I mean, come on. What are we going to do here? Unemployed soldiers. I mean, think of that. Then it would put back into the industrial might. And then, you know, there wouldn't be enough space between consumer and manufacturer. It's harder to levy taxes. Every pirate knows this. I mean, it's been going on for centuries. The Royal Navy taught us that, what, six, seven hundred years ago? Thereabouts. And it supplies the rum trade. Among other things that we all love, which are highly taxed when you have to move them to a wide distribution market. There's plenty of room to leverage yourself in that way. Especially if you've got a Navy behind you. And you happen to be allied to the United States. There's profits to be made in all this peace, peace, past talk. And where do we ever get with that? There's no way to build empires. You see, I wouldn't listen to her. Just full of shit she is. Folks, I just wanted to stop by and do my part to say no war, not in my name. I want to share something with you. What I see personally whenever I see the word military. Then the word military, I see the words millionaire. I also see the word tariff, and I also see the word why. Why do we have a military? Well, this is why, folks, to create a millionaire, to create millionaires. How do we do that? Through all those tariffs and those taxes that they pose on us, supposedly only during times of war, but we've all learned that that's just a big lie because they want to keep us in continual war so they continue to be millionaires. And we just sit here and you know, pretty much survive by the skin of our teeth, for lack of a better term. So I would like to say today, don't tarry any longer, folks. We have all these beautiful children and grandchildren that we have to look out for, and that's why I'm doing this video today. No war, not in my name. <laughs> People in Iran who don't know 
who I am They like to kill me all the same But they don't even know my name They just know where I'm from And what some folks have done Out there in D.C. Who claim to speak for me There's a young man in my shot don't like it, men it is We want to kill him all the same But we don't even know his name We just know where he's from And what some folks have done Out there in Tehran In a country called Iran You can rub a stamp of people You can say they're all the same but their leaders and their tyrants are the ones you ought to blame. The young man in the shot and this man sitting here. We're just trying to survive in the midst of all this fear. There are children over there. There are children over here who don't have enough to eat. Some are living in the street No matter where we're from We see what folks have done They think that war is a game And we all know their names You can rub a stamp of people You can say we're all the same But their leaders and their tyrants Are the ones you ought to blame Young man in the shot And this man sitting here We're just trying to survive In the midst of all this fear We're just trying to survive In the midst of all this fear Greetings, this is uh, Russell from Mr. Sly Red Fox. I just want to say to the United States government, no more wars, not in my name, no more wars. I've had enough. Stop the wars. There's no need for this. We should mind our own business. It's not our war to fight. It's not our problem. We are being financially ruined. This country is in trouble. We need to fix ourselves before we can help others. No more wars. No more fighting. No more bloodshed, please. Stop it. We have our own problems. This has got to end before it gets worse. That's all I have to say. These are the stakes. We must either love each other or we must die. So we're at a busy intersection here in um, the rural place, but um, to be proactive on no war, not in my name, see that X marks the spot, you see Kenny. And you'll see no war. Not in my name. Get involved. Google it. <laughs> Perfect, Kenny. Um, this is what we've been doing today. Trying to be very proactive and interview some people also. Please, guys, send in your little clips. Peace, guys.
I'd just like to show my support by saying um, my name is David and no war, in my, no war in my name or my family's name. I've got too much, um, too much writing on my family. All right, thank you. Hey, I just wanted to ask you a few questions. What do you think about us sending troops back into Iraq? Well, I think it's good because uh, now uh, big government or uh, big business can make more money. So there in turn, they get richer, our troops get killed. Works out perfect. Nothing else you could ask for. You're a smart ass. I'm just joking. <laughs> yes. So you would say? I would say I feel sorry for the troops. What about the Iraqi peoples? I, I, well, I'm getting to that. Okay. I'm sorry that our troops have to fight a war that's not ours. I'm sorry that the American people don't know what's going on or choose to ignore it. I'm sorry for the Iraqi citizens, especially, you know, people, out, the one out of one billion people that's probably not a true terrorist, the rest of them all get blown up and shot, and um, it's very sad. Yes, so, it is. You think we should bring all troops home? I, unless they are asked to be there for some sort of training or something, you know, that's between them and whoever, but uh, yeah, as far as our government putting troops there, there it's a waste of lives and a lot of money. Thank you very much for your time. No problem. no more wars, my money. Hi, I'm Rebecca Aaron, no more wars in my name. Hi, I'm Angel Aaron, no more wars in my name. I'm Angel Aaron, and no more wars, not anywhere, not in our name. Home, entitled, First They Came. It is a famous statement and provocative poem attributed to the to Pastor Martin Niemöller about the cowardice of German intellectuals following the Nazi rise to power and the subsequent purging of their chosen targets, group after group. The best known version of this speech is located at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. It goes like this. First they came for the socialists. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out, because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out, because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. I'd like everybody to think about that poem. I think it, it says a lot for the people of the United States of America not speaking up about what their country and the military industrial complex is going all over the world stomping on countries and killing millions of innocent people for for no reason we need to stand together we need to speak up it is your problem it's all of our problems a country divided cannot stand A warm for hi to the Ikini and Linda family, and that's their YouTube channel, and I'm going to spell it E-K-E-N-N-Y-E -E -E and Linda, L-I-N-D-A. They are asked for everybody on earth to do them a favor, so I hope you do them a favor and make sure you're on one minute video. It only has one minute. and. Uh, title of your uh, one minute poem should be called No War Not My Name Part 2 so here's my minute it's gonna be a rough one if you had only one minute in life how would you spend that minute with no song but the Native American Indians had only a few seconds before they would die from the Illuminati's guns and as we see a new world order for the children Wolves will kill them before we are gone. 
For we have only one minute to tell the children it is time for them to run. But let us not tell the children to keep on running. Tell them to stop and stand up strong. But we also need the adults to say the same thing. No war, no wars, no wars will have my name when I will be gone. And if we all stand up together and make one minute go on so long, we can all stop the Illuminati's wars that are killing our children. No war, not in my name, will be our only song. Well, this is the hippie test. Love each other like the hippies do to have peace on earth. And uh, loves me like a brother and I love you like a brother and sister in life. Well, uh, that's a good one, Linda and uh, Ikimi. That was a good idea. Bye, y'all. Battle weary, are we? That's right. It's time for no war. Not in my name. Peace and goodwill towards all. Thank you. We as American people do not want this war. It needs to be clear and understood to our government. What they're doing is totally uncalled for. We can't deal with the problems we have at home, yet we have to go and control everybody else's country. This is not right. That's why they call the United States the Whore of Babylon. That's why they say what they do about us. We can't control our country. Look what's happening to our country. And you want to send our men and women back over there to be slaughtered like cattle. And this is the way I feel about it. No war in my name. Can you see this? Can you see this? Hmm? You better be listening to the people. We the people have a right. We have freedom of speech. Whether you know it or not up there on Capitol Hill. We have a right and freedom of speech. We do not want our men and women slaughtered ever again. All for the love of the oil fields, when we can get oil right here at home. That's my way of thinking about this. I've already lost one nephew to the Iraqi war. I will not stand by and watch our men, women, brothers, sisters, cousins, you name it. I'm sick of seeing them slaughtered. This has to stop. This has to stop now. No war, not in my name. Part two, no wars, not my name. Hey, White House, you people up there in the White House, no more wars, not my name. Stop the genocide. Stop trying to take away our Constitution. Stop all the propaganda. Just stop. People are waking up. No more, uh, no more wars, not my name. This is called activism. Uh, right here. This is kind of where everybody sticks their signs. And we put No War in My Name Part 2. Google it. Find it on YouTube. Get involved. Let the government hear your voice. This is sponsored by We the People. So, just thought I'd show you guys. We did hide a political sign. Anyway, <laughs> Guys, we're really serious about no war, not in my name part two. Love you guys. Hi, this is Reverend Galileo, a sovereign person from the state of Maine. Peace, no war in Syria.
No war in Iraq, no war, period. Enough is enough. This time, they're sneaking it in. They's not, they're not even going to look for congressional approval, nothing. They have know that you've had it with the news. They know you're not watching, and they're doing it while you're not watching. No war in my name. No war in Preston's name. Peace. My name is Lobo at the Stray Dog Crew. My straw man name is Brian Price, and I live in Fremont County, Colorado. I'm here to tell the government once again, no war, not in my name. We've had this conversation, dude. I ain't having it. Thirteen months ago, I quit paying my taxes to you fools, so you can't fight a war in my name anymore. I barter, trade, do cash deals, everything I can, so I don't have to pay you a dime, and I encourage others to do the same. To the U.S. military, we haven't declared war since World War II, so every war you've been fighting in since then has been illegal. Since World War II, you've killed 26 million people around the world. Three out of four of those were civilians. Three out of four. You're not a warrior. You want to know what a warrior is? A warrior is that little boy where you just killed his father, a little boy throwing rocks at you to get him to leave your country. That's a warrior. May God bless and keep him. To all the real Americans out there, live free or die. No more, not my name. myself and my entire family. No more war, not in our name. Hey friends, this is the Miss Wolfie from our Half Acre Homestead and I'm here to say wars are no longer being fought for our safety. They are sending our troops to foreign soil to die for profit. The Canadian government does not speak for me when they send our troops into war on foreign soil. No war, not in my name. God bless.
Okay, friends. I just like to say today, no war in my name. I got too many things to do. And I got too many things to worry about. And I care too much about this country. We need to not fight no more wars overseas, bring our boys home and get over this. In that I say, no war in my name, no more no war in Brenda's name, and any of my family or my friends. God bless you. Howdy kids, hug the wife, the old Marine Block. I'm gonna close out on the No War in My Name flag. Banner here. And that's what we mean, guys. Right there. And that's what the chopper's looking like, friends. Have a good one. God bless. Howdy kids, hug the wife. Bye bye. Okay. Hi, I, um, I'm not going to give your name just for anonymous reasons here. Um, so I wanted to ask you a question. What do you think about us bringing troops, taking troops back into Iraq? I think we fulfilled what we needed to do there, and we need to step back and let them regroup and get their things uh, back in order. I don't think we should be a part of it at all. Um, do you think that, that we should have bases all over the world and kind of empire the whole world? I don't. That's like somebody stepping into your neighborhood and kind of telling you what to do, and I just I don't think we should in some parts of the countries. So would you say that you would, you would say no war, not in my name? Oh, yeah, I'd definitely say no war, not in my name, and hopefully it's heard by somebody. It will be, and I thank you very much. All right. Hello there folks, how goes it? All my love to subscribers old and new as always. I'd like to start this video by saying that fighting for peace is like fucking for virginity. It just doesn't make any sense at all. No war, not in my name. The, uh, the, um, our government wanted to fund ISIS in Syria. Now they can't keep track of them when they come back home to England. What does that say about ISIS? That they're mostly foreign fighters. Somebody had to put the guns in their hands. Somebody has to fund them. Somebody has to supply them with explosives. And I think if the security services know there's 300 coming back to Great Britain, then they obviously know who they are. And they really should be, uh, they should be putting them in there. Uh, zip up bags and leaving them in hotel rooms like they do with their own agents I mean I don't I just don't get it I mean let's look at this uh, let's look at this uh, seriously on 9-11 the United States was attacked by Israeli forces it's not it's not Muslims there was a van stopped on a bridge, exiting New York, laden with explosives. There were five Israelis inside, two of which were Mossad agents. The other three, it's all here on YouTube, the other three uh, were interviewed on an Israeli talk show and, the other two, uh, and one of the Mossad agents was in the audience. Three gentlemen were spotted on the morning of 9-11 uh, moving a van to get a better position uh, overlooking the Twin Towers so they could see both towers. They were filming the towers as they, as the planes hit. They were flicking lighters up in the air, uh, celebrating. They were spotted, they were filmed doing this and um, they were dancing. They were very happy uh, that the United States had been, uh, been attacked. The letter that was found, the note uh, suggesting that uh, Death to death to America, death to Israel was highly suspicious, wasn't it? It was highly suspicious. This this smells. These Zionists, they are, they have taken over the foreign policy of every nation on this globe because they've managed to divide us into different nations and set us up against each other, using group conformity and obedience to authority. Again, more psychological methods of mind control. Saw another experiment, brilliant it is, it's the uh, Stanford Prison Experiment. Look that one up. It's another uh, psychological job uh, of how brutality uh, is 
a part of government. It is inherent to government. It's very interesting, very interesting video. I'll post a link below like I did on the old obedience and authority experiments. But anyway, I just thought I'd uh, share all that with you. Um, please pick apart any of my arguments if you think I'm wrong. I'd be, I, I'm more than happy to admit when I'm wrong, if I'm wrong, but I don't think I'm wrong. And uh, the, event, the world events that are playing out seem to be backing up what I'm saying. Orwell spoke about a permanent state of war uh, in order to subjugate people under authority. Authority is only force. I'll keep saying it because it's true. Anyway, all my love to you and yours. Be lucky. Don't be strangers. Look forward to reading all your lovely comments. Peace. Great spirit, I ask that you will stop the bloodshed and the hate and the crime and that there will be no more war anymore in any place and in any time. No war, no more wars, not in my name or in any name. Peace and love. You know, there's a lot of things that a true man will fight for. A man, boy, father. <laughs> Friends, family, your children, freedom. But there's quite a few that a true man won't fight for. Greed, power, politics, <laughs> propaganda. No. It was once said the Japanese feared they had awoken a sleeping giant. Well, and one of those fears was that there would be a gun behind every blade of grass. Don't forget about the rest of us. <clears throat> Some will stand and fight. Some will run and hide. I fight for what's right. And all I've got to say no war, not in my name. No more war, not in my name. What to say? No war, not in my name. We're sick of all of it. So people need to set aside their differences and see that war is pointless. We don't want it, Americans, people of the world. We want peace. You're Just so tired and sick of turning on the news every day and seeing a new war in some country and us being there when we shouldn't even be there. We need to worry about our own country. Thank you. These United States of America. Remember that word? United? That's what it's going to take. If we want to stop these wars, if we want to stop this bullshit that this out of control demonic government is perpetrating around the world, 
then we have to unite. We have to come together. And guess what? Even though we're not 100% unified right now, our numbers are growing. You know this. We're unifying more and more every day. We're coming together more and more every day. And we're starting to realize what you're really about. No more sending our mothers and fathers and brothers and sisters and sons and daughters off to foreign lands to fight for your greed. No, they're not fighting for democracy. See. Wrong. No war, not in my name. Spread the word. Hey everybody, Justin Wu Lee coming in. So Linda Little Bear is very good people. I'll have her channel linked in the description box. And this is her operation, but I would like to participate. It is called Not In My Name. And to all you Bilderberg members, Trilateral Commission, CFR, Skull and Bones men, all of you and your little puppets, your crimes will not be continuing in my name. And the way I see it, I've got a name to clear and I aim to collect. So you best be ready for that. The opposite of war is not peace, it's creation. And if we focus the time, energy, and money that we put into war instead on the opposite, we could be more than humans have ever been before. My name is David Mulligan, and I say no war, not in my name. Home, entitled First They Came. It is a famous statement and provocative poem attributed to Pastor Martin Niemöller about the cowardice of German intellectuals following the Nazi rise to power and the subsequent purging of their chosen targets, group after group. The best known version of this speech is located at the United States Holocaust Memorial Museum. It goes like this. First they came for the socialists. I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then they came for the trade unionists and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then they came for me and there was no one left to speak for me. I'd like everybody to think about that poem. I think it it says a lot for the people of the United States of America not speaking up about what their country and the military industrial complex is going all over the world stomping on countries and killing millions of innocent people for for no reason. We need to stand together. We need to speak up. It is your problem. It's all of our problems. A country divided cannot stand. I'm 
taking a stand for life and humanity. Hell no, no more war, not in my name. Uh, peace, that's it. Love, it'll work. Good evening, I'm the second agent for reason. Today's topic is Not In My Name, version 2.0. For this special occasion, I have written a little song, and here it goes. Not in my name, no war in Iraq. Not in my name, into Syria back. Not in my name, another lie today. Not in my name, to your pain, I pray. Not in my name, with satellite nations. Not in my name, I'm losing patience. Not in my name, not with my money. Not in my name, it's not funny. Wicked warmongers funding a bullet's flood, tsunami of dead civilians' blood. Business is business, and so I've heard said, fighting for freedom for business we dread. Not in my name, I gotta say no, not with my money or consent I say so. There is no revenge in love and forgiven, so go away army, we're too busy living. been since the United States has not been involved in a war. Some conflict somewhere in the world. Too long. Can't remember. Can't remember even one year. Not one year. Not a single year. Had enough of these wars. I had enough. Say no wars, not in my name. No more wars. No more. Um, Israel has had Iraq in its crosshairs for a very long time, wanting to break it up, wanting to, uh, to break up all of the different uh, parts of the region into four warring factions. By definition, military production output is not real wealth. Wars destroy wealth rather than creating it. In fact, if you look at the figures for American economic activity and you strip out the war effects, as people like Robert Higgs have shown, what you can only conclude is that, in fact, the Great Depression does not really end until 1947 or 1948, uh, and that the war simply conceals or covers up the continuing uh, low level of real wealth-creating economic activity in the United States. The idea that the economic activity surrounding militarization represents a net economic gain is called the broken window fallacy. This fallacy was named and identified by French economist Frédéric Bastiat in his 1850 essay, That Which Is Seen and That Which Is Not Seen, in which he imagines the case of a shopkeeper whose careless son breaks a pane of glass in his shop window. In Bastiat's example, that which is seen is that the glazier comes, performs the task of fixing the window, and receives six francs for his effort. Onlookers to the scene believe that the economy has actually been bolstered by this act of destruction, since six francs have been spent into it that otherwise would not have been. But Bastiat notes that what is important is not what is seen, but what is not seen. It is not seen that as our shopkeeper has spent six francs upon one thing, he cannot spend them upon another. It is not seen that if he had not had a window to replace, he would, perhaps, have replaced his old shoes, or added another book to his library. In short, he would have employed his six francs in some way, which this accident has prevented. Similarly, Production for war is the broken window fallacy writ large. Economic gains produced by government spending on munitions and vehicle manufacture and supplying and equipping the troops are not gains at all. Money has merely been diverted to the pockets of the defense contractors via the political cronies in their back pocket. So why is this important? Because, sadly, this myth is being played on by the warmongering class to once again push the idea that war is good and even necessary for economic progress. 
This time it is not just manufacture of supplies or munitions that are being touted, but war's ability to justify government spending on investment. No matter how unlikely the threat, or whether it is indeed completely made up, this warped thinking holds that such lies and exaggerations are the answer to our current economic problems. What is most fundamentally upsetting about the mindset that justifies carnage in the name of economic gain is that economic gain is usually measured in abstract concepts like GDP growth or increasing equities markets that have no or even negative correlation with the livelihood of the poorest members of society. Income actually shrank by 0.7% for 99% of Americans during the supposed recovery of 2009 to 2011. For the top 1%, income grew 11.5%. This is the type of help that massive government spending on bank bailouts and other stimulus measures invariably creates. In times of war, the situation is even more perverse. Money is created as debt owed to the banks, backed up by the average working taxpayer, to pay politically connected defense contractors to create bombs to kill poor brown people on the other side of the planet. No politician, angel with a halo They know they ruining the planet Like children with matches It's madness for damn masses Need to wake up and stop the killing of the innocents Military strikes with drones on homes of civilians Millions dead from fraudulent wars and nobody stopping them, you watching the apocalypse It's time for you to stop this shit The of the planet, where the money they make Man, I hate it in this matrix, in their secret handshakes Deals with the devil, how you voted them in Hoping they win, till they sending some drums to your kids While you're opening lids, to your cokes and your chips Exposed to GMOs, until you're choking, you're sick They hoping nobody notices this, but I have I am a rebel, a renegade, a fighter, and a truther No lies, we will rise for the lives of the future Johnny Black Enough already we gotta bring them home. Uh huh. It's enough already. We gotta bring them home. Stop the hate and the violence. Let your weapons fall silent. What we do to each other. Can't you see it's wrong? So ask yourself just who am I? If I were you, would I wanna die? Why, oh, why can we just give peace a chance? Good for you know it's not the answer, so why resort to violence in the name of peace? Is it just an excuse for you to cut the lease? Set your dogs off war on those you despise. All around the world there is a war on life, but you know the one thing's for sure. There ain't no fucking way that I prove this war. This planet's got a long way to go. A thousand years of culture, but with nothing to show except a better way to kill. Design my corporations who are in it for the thrill. Business. Another form of profit for the global elite So perpetuate in the violence Keep the cash flowing there on easy street Cause life is cheap when you're in their seat Praying on the lives of the poor and the weak While pay two dollars just to save them We make it, make it kill them When it's all guns are blazing All the planes and the tanks and the guns and the bombs Pretty damn sure that they're doing it wrong Ain't no way the world has got a chance when you talk about peace down the barrel of a gun See war is rock and they feed on strife Always coming at you with the gun or the knife But the brother line you up and pull the trigger It's just another puppet of a brother who is bigger Understand I'm not just talking about the USA There's a double undertaking to the words I say Cause it's just another puppet at the end of the day Another one of many in this world of hate So don't get me wrong cause the world ain't easy We all got our differences plain to see But instead of taking Time to talk it through You just pull another trigger Watch your problems cease Another man deceased Another orphan child All of them are victims In this world gone wild So I gotta say my peace And let my voice be heard Educate the people Through the truth I've learned Cause war's not the answer It's part of the disease When we find each other Only ones who are pleased Are the ones who make a profit From our pain As they sit behind their walls All immune to the rain So I'm sending out my message To the people Say no to war Put an end to all is evil if we all stand together so the world can see We can all live together, let our souls be free So Asia, stop the war You 
you know that killing others is a thing I abhor Africa, stop the war You were all brothers, so what the fuck you fighting for? South America, stop the violence Killing over drugs, it doesn't make no sense in USA Stop the hate and the anger Put away your guns and we can all live together Hey, that's what I say Say no to war, not in my name Can't you see it's wrong? Can't you see it's wrong? So I'm just who 